Hey everyone, welcome back to Grey Wizard Gaming. In this video, I'm going to be talking about what 8-bit attack is and more so how to win. So 8-bit attack is a cooperative strategy game from Sandy Peterson of Peterson Games. And the game's theme is 8-bit gaming, so that's the name 8-bit attack. It's effectively the boss battles portion of old school 8-bit RPGs like Final Fantasy, Dragon Warrior, things like that. The game is, I mean, this is it. This is all of the game plus all of the expansions. And mostly what the expansions do is increase the number of heroes pretty substantially. I mean, I think you'd be hard pressed to find any other game with this many different heroes who play each differently, like they all have their own powers. The game is tough, but generally I think if you are familiar with cooperative board games, you know they're tough. They're supposed to be tough because if they were easy, you wouldn't want to play it for very long. Now for us, it took three games before we got our first win. And man, like we really felt like we earned it. I do want to give some tips because I think we could have played better earlier if we had a better understanding of the foundation of the game. So first of all, if you randomly choose your heroes, Cthulhu help you. Because I, I don't know that we would be very successful randomly choosing heroes. I know our first two games, we were miserably under-equipped to handle what was thrown at us. In my opinion, I highly recommend choosing your heroes. Now, how do you choose your heroes? Because there's a lot of them. If you have all the expansions, you have a lot of heroes. And the way that I did it, because I didn't want to spend three hours having five people learn all the heroes so they could choose their heroes, is I separated these by role. And so the roles I identified, which may be not the same way you would identify them, is I identified a tank, a healer, an area attack person, and a single attack person. Now, we played with four people, we played with five people. Was five people substantially easier because five people is easier? Maybe. Definitely we had more roles covered. But I don't think that our tactics would have been any less effective at four players. Now, the gameplay, you choose the difficulty that you want to challenge and that creates a boss battle. So there's no grinding here. This is only the fun parts of the amazing dramatic boss battles where you don't know if you're gonna win or lose. Now, you choose a, a challenge which can go anywhere between like level one to level seven. And level one is two minions and level seven is five minions and two champions. Now, you always have a champion, so that really means that you would be fighting three champions and you'd be fighting five minions, which is eight total bosses plus, plus weaker almost bosses. And there's only four or five of you. So, I mean, it's, it, it gets pretty tough. What we recommend is start with a level one. Level one, you're gonna get a real good feel for how your team of chosen characters can work together to solve problems. It's also gonna give you one trophy. If you have five players, you can probably start with level two, but um, if level four, maybe you just want one, and then work your way up from there. Just, just coast a little bit in the beginning, earn your medals, 
and then use those metals to level up. Now, how do you level up? This is important. We, in the beginning, focused on ascending. So you, you get two metals and you flip and then you get an extra attack die, which is important. And you get a passive, which is just like an ability that always goes off, or I mean, it always goes off if something happens. And then you get a new ability. Now, that sounds all amazing. It's great. I think it's a trap. That's what we decided. Most characters will benefit more from unlocking these small traits. And this is my reason why. If you unlock this trait, this trait is a slow attack. Every attack, or slow damage. Every attack, you will get an automatic slow damage. Every time, automatically, it's guaranteed. So that costs you one medal for one success or one damage. This die rolls an energy one out of six times. It's not guaranteed damage. This particular character, um, your attack hits all enemies if you, if you activate this ability. So getting guaranteed damage for the two metals it would cost you to upgrade getting a guaranteed two damage that you can always start every battle applying to all enemies, plus whatever you roll, I think it's better most of the time. We did not get the hit points until the end. I think until the very end. We had good heroes with good rolls. From the third game on, good heroes with good rolls, not not, not rolls. I mean, my rolls suck, guys. But my, my character role of saying, hey, this game, I want to be the healer. I'm going to be the healer, guys. I got you guys covered. And then somebody else is going to be the tank. And they got it covered. Um, that meant we didn't need the hit points because we always had somebody healing. And the healer wasn't dying because we always had that tank, like, redirecting stuff back to them. So if you have good rolls, you probably don't need the hit points as much as you want more damage because damage is going to kill monsters quicker and killing monsters quicker is going to reduce how much damage you're taking, which means you don't need the hit points. Now, killing monsters, swarm attack, guys. If you played the old gold box games, any of those old role playing games, you always want to focus on one monster as much as possible. I say as much as possible, not 100%, because if your character can't do anything, meaning you're the only person who did fast attack damage and the monster absorbs fast attack damage, don't bother. Like, apply it somewhere randomly, who cares? But you want to kill monsters as fast as possible. Now, which monsters do you kill? Well, the way that we focused was we always look for summoners. If there's a monster that summons, we will probably fixate on that monster because the last thing we want is more monsters because, you know, you choose in the very beginning how much experience you're going to get. And if you get a monster who summons monsters and they're summoning monsters, possibly other monsters who also summon monsters, you get no more experience. So if I wanted to attack eight monsters, I want to get the experience or the rewards for eight monsters. I don't want to fight, like get the rewards for three monsters and fight eight monsters, right? So um, if they summon, we generally focused on them first. I think I think we've only had a, a monster who summons, summon a monster, maybe once. We are really good about it. We, we are lethal. We're like, we'll let somebody die. And I'll talk about that in a moment. So fixate on monster, kill it if it summons. 
Second, this little, uh, this little nuclear explosion symbol, yeah, that nuclear explosion symbol sucks. That means it affects all the players. So, um, yeah, he's got it. In fact, every round, this monster does one fast attack damage to everybody. Kill it dead, guys. It's got to go. So that's, that's an important thing. We always look at the ones that affect everybody because if one person is really having a hard time, it's at least the rest of us can pick up the slack and hopefully save that person, especially the healer. These guys who nuke everybody, they're, they're no bueno. So kill them. All right. What about that guy who's taking five damage? each round. So he's not going to survive the second round. And everyone's like, I, Hey, I need help. I'm going to attack my own monster. Dude, don't attack your own monster. Attack the group monster. Whatever the group has decided is the most deadly threat, kill it. And you're like, no, the most deadly threat is the werewolf on my face. Who's going to kill me next round. No, man, hold up. You're fine. Because even if you die, you're going to be back in the next battle. You absorbed one for the team. You have to be willing to lose your character. This is a co-op game that doesn't really punish you for you having a few minor losses, just like those old video games, right? People, you know, stand back, stand back up as long as at least one person survives to the end. So a few times, we definitely chose sacrificial lambs knowing that person might die. And FYI, they almost never did. Because by focus firing on one monster and killing them, the entire group could sweep in and save that person just at the last moment. And it works. Like it's, this game really rewards coordination teamwork, and strategy. Now, you are going to want to level up, obviously. It's good. It's an extra die. It's a passive ability. I'm not saying not to do that. And I'm not saying that you always have to focus on one monster. Like I said, if, if somebody can't do something, that's fine. You can, you can separate it out. You want to carefully count so that if somebody's doing two damage this round and somebody's doing five damage this round and the monster only has two hit points or even one hit point, make sure you're not applying the wrong damage, right? You, you want to do as much unblocked damage as possible. Now, once monsters have hit their threshold, then the rest of the damage is just piled on, right? So if a monster has two fast attack absorption, then once somebody's done two fast attack damage, everybody else can do normal fast attack damage. It's, it's, it's very crucial. You, you really, um, number one, you can't misread it because our first game went really bad because we thought it was each, each monster that, that was hard mode guys. Um, but otherwise, you definitely don't want to have like, oh, somebody does fast attack damage to this monster. Most of it was blocked. And now we're going to do um, fast attack to a different monster. And some of that's blocked. And then we're going to do a bunch of slow attack damage to the first monster. Wait a minute, guys. Like you could have flipped this around and you could have done full slow attack damage to the, to the second monster. And you could have done full fast attack damage from your second attack to the first monster. I know it didn't make any sense. It's fine, guys. You'll get it. The most powerful ability in the game. I don't know that this is true, guys, but it definitely makes the game a lot easier. Stun. Stun allows you to take a monster out of play for one round. Also, monsters can stun players, so, I mean, it's it goes both ways. But stun is cool, and... I'm not saying you need to have a hero with stun, but I'm, I am going to say that my group prefers to have it one hero with stun every game. 
it's just amazing it's awesome it's a really powerful ability it's not so broken that it just breaks the game but it it feels very tactical it feels very much like something that you're like oh my gosh there's eight monsters on the board who are we going to stun we can't stun everybody and we don't have enough energy to stun many people many times so um it's powerful it's limited but it can be the difference between kind of just like coasting through a battle and really struggling so stun is good all right now potions do not undervalue potions guys because one reward one medal or whatever gives you a potion that revives a hero a potion that gives you six health and a potion that gives you four energy which means that character that has stun might be able to get one or even two more stuns off with one potion and you think yeah but these are all gone well at the very least by the boss battle you want as many heroes to have as many potions as possible now something that we did was we started having people give up their entire turn just to feed the stun guy energy potions and it was like okay you give up your turn to feed him an energy potion and then she's going to use her attack and i'm going to use my attack and he's going to stun and now i'm going to feed him an energy potion and now those are all going to attack and he's going to stun and it just it was like quick and fast and it felt good it's a good game guys this this game is super fun it really makes you think round by round it gets your brain going it's it's teamwork you've got to like balance all these things that are going on it is like non-stop endless boss battles well endless i mean five 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 boss battles in a row like i said there's no grinding here guys you're just gonna like ram through kick down the door fight the boss get the level ups and then move on to the next boss which is pretty cool when you compare to like a lot of the other cooperative games which have like a lot of filler um but i mean i like the filler too it's just this is a different game for people who really like that like like man you know we've got we've each got three or three to five things we can do this round and we have to carefully choose each of those things we do in order to maximize our success against this monster and if we fail we're gonna get slapped a little bit that monster that's gonna like nuke everybody on the table yeah they got it, they got to let it go off so there you go i'm very curious comment down below if you've played this game and if you haven't is there another game like this you recommend that you think i should try because i love this game this game is real good all right everyone take it easy keep on gaming be safe wear a mask if your community you know requires it so uh, if you're somewhere that doesn't need masks because you're not crazy, uh, you know, having outbreaks, then lucky for you. So, all right. Bye, everyone.